So I recently picked this up, the Fujifilm Instax Mini 90 Neo Classic. And if you're unaware of the Fujifilm Instax line of cameras on film, this camera essentially just takes pictures and spits out instant images. If you couldn't tell, this camera is actually inside of a polycarbonate clear case right now. So I'm just going to take it out and show you guys what the camera itself looks like. Fairly straightforward, black and silver, very clean. The camera itself is very straightforward and really minimalistic. In the front we have a power button that turns the camera on. On the back, five different buttons to choose from the different settings and modes that you can go in. The first button is macro mode and this of course adjusts the camera to allow you to take pictures at much closer distances. The second button is your light and dark button. And you just want to think of this as exposure compensation. Light adds more light to the image making it brighter, dark darkens it. Self timer mode is well really self explanatory. Once you go into this mode it allows the camera to fire the shutter after a predetermined amount of time allowing you to put the camera down, get into the composition or whatever else you might want to do with that. The nice thing about the Neo Classic 90 is that you can actually adjust the flash settings. You can get the regular flash, flash with red eye reduction or just straight turn it off when you don't need it. This camera also features five different shooting modes from party, kids, landscape, multiple exposure and bulb mode. Like I said, this camera is very straightforward. I don't even have to open up the manual to learn how to use this thing. It essentially is just a point shoot that gives you instant prints. The main reason why I want to make this video today was because I've seen a lot of reviews on this camera and everybody across the board seems to praise it and not really say anything negative about it. But as somebody who understands photography on a deeper level and somebody who makes a living doing photography, I saw a lot of things wrong with this camera. And today I just want to share some of my thoughts with you guys and a couple different things to look out for in case you're interested in buying something like this. So before we get started on my various complaints about this camera, I want to put it out there that I mainly use this camera in automatic mode and macro mode because the other modes really don't apply to me. I mean, party mode, that's really only if you want to use it in a dimly lit room and you're using flash. Uh, sports mode or kid mode is really just raising the shutter speed and you know like landscapes for items really far away farther than nine meters bold mode multiple exposure they're all very self-explanatory but I really don't use it for those applications so really automatic mode is the best for my application and macro mode my first complaint with this camera is that very often highlights are completely blown out you lose all information and in your subject really all you're seeing is a white spot of light in this first picture that we're looking at, you see Sassy up front and Buffy in the back. Sassy is a black dog and Buffy is, for the most part, a white and light brown dog. But if you look at the exposure on the two different subjects, as you can see, Sassy being the darkest subject is exposed relatively perfect. But Sassy in the background is just, for the most part, completely blown out. All the white in her fur is just lost. There's really no data there to be collected. In this next picture, you're looking at Brooklyn hugging Sassy. Now Brooklyn, although she is Caucasian, she is not as white as Buffy, who has white fur. Nevertheless, as you can see, the right side of Brooklyn's face is completely blown out. And this is with the darkened mode, where the exposure is actually reduced, giving you a darker image. From my experience with this camera, anytime that you're shooting outside in bright sunlight, or just really any well-lit situations where you have a lighter subject, whether it be skin, fur, texture, whatever it may be, that subject is most likely going to get blown out, even if you use the darkened feature. Whether or not you care about this is ultimately up to you, but I think that this is a legit problem and something that you should definitely be aware of. My next complaint on this camera is that the flash is just way too strong, and if you don't know how to use it right, your exposure is going to be off the charts, you're just going to lose all data. In this first example, we are looking at a picture of a platter of food from a party that I attended. This was shot in macro mode with the flash on because I just happened to forget to turn it off. But it gives us a good learning experience. If you're planning on using macro mode, just remember to turn the flash off because like I said, the flash is way too strong and if it is on, it will be completely overexposed and you will most likely lose that image. These next two photos are really just examples of what you can get with the flash on and how much power it actually puts out. I am sitting at one end of the table and Red Mel is sitting at the other end, about five feet away from me. And as you can see with the flash off, the room is completely dark. With the flash on, it is completely lit up. So this flash is quite powerful for its small size. Just keep that in mind. These next three photos kind of show you the results that you can get with the flash. 
This first photo was shot with the flash off. As you can see, the camera compensated by lowering your shutter speed, allowing more light to get in, but as a result, the subjects moved and you have motion blur. The second photo was shot with flash on and red eye reduction mode, and in all these photos, I'm sitting about 3 feet away from my subjects. As you can see, both Brooklyn and Hannah are, for the most part, completely blown out. Their face and all the highlights are gone. There's really no information there. Nothing but white light. The third photo is taken with flash on with red eye reduction and darken mode activated. So as you can see, Hannah, for the most part, is very well lit and very well exposed. Brooklyn, on the other hand, being a little bit closer and being a little bit fairer skin is kind of overexposed. This photo is still usable, but again, still overexposed. So for my results, I kind of came to the conclusion that if you're going to use flash on this camera, try to move your subjects at least five feet away, and that should give you at least a better result than what you would get closer. My next complaint is that this camera has a serious shutter lag, meaning once you press the button, there is a delay from when the camera actually exposes the film, which makes it very hard to determine when to actually take the picture. These next two photos of the girls playing basketball were taken in sports mode, meaning that the shutter speed is raised up and the camera automatically turns on the flash to compensate for this light loss. If you can make it out in the first photo, the ball is actually still in Brooklyn's hand, and of course in the second photo the ball is in mid-flight. I have to admit that I still don't have a really firm grasp of when the shutter will actually fire after pressing the shutter release. In the first photo, I anticipated the shutter lag to be slightly more, so I pressed it while she was about to take the shot, thinking that the ball would be in the air by the time the shutter fires, but obviously that was not the case. In the second shot, I had to make sure that the ball was clearly in the air before pressing the shutter, and this time I was able to get the ball about to hit the hoop. Of all the problems that this camera have, I think that the shutter lag is probably the worst, because that has made me lose more images than any other problems. Without being able to know when the shutter will actually fire, you're really just shooting in the dark. You're just pressing the button and hoping that you capture the right moment. And that is a huge problem to me. Even though this camera was meant to be very straightforward and very easy to use, I feel like there is a huge learning curve to this thing if you really want to use it to its full potential. But that being said, I absolutely love this thing. I think I've brought it everywhere with me since purchasing it, using it every day, even though it's expensive as hell to use. Depending on where you buy the film, it could cost you up to a dollar per shot. And when you lose an image and just take a bad picture, it's just like, it hits your heart like, ah, oh, that's just a dollar every time. Every time you lose a dollar missing a shot with this thing. Like I said, I absolutely love this thing. Images don't look all that great. It's hard to use, it's expensive to use, but overall, if you're thinking about buying one of these, I would say absolutely go for it. There's just something so satisfying about getting an image right in this camera, and I just absolutely love it. If this video has helped you out, don't forget to give me a thumbs up, share it, comment down below telling me what you think about this camera or the Instax line in general. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.